Hello there, my name's Dave, and I'm a fish keeper as well as a fisheries biologist with a passion for making videos about freshwater fish. And I'm about to show you something that's never been captured on film before. But first, let me set the stage so you have a better understanding of what you're looking at. It's the end of May in the northeastern United States, and the water temperature in this river is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, or 20 degrees Celsius. And at this time of the year, many fish species are spawning. This fish with the black line running down its side is a type of minnow known as an eastern black-nosed dace, and every so often you'll see one with a reddish coloration, and those are the sexually mature males with their spawning colors on full display as they try to convince the females to breed with them. But the real star of this video is hiding under this rock, and he'll make his grand entrance in just a little bit. But first, we need to talk about another, very different type of minnow that's about to enter the scene. This fish right here is a fathead minnow, which is also sometimes called a toughy, due to their ability to survive in a wide variety of different and often extremely challenging conditions. And these white bumps on the head are called breeding tubercles. They only occur on the males when they're spawning, and they're used to clean the area where the eggs will be laid by the female. The spawning males also develop this gray area right here, which is called a dorsal pad. And this pad secretes mucus that serves as a lubricant to help protect the male's dorsal side from abrasion as it rubs against the underside of the rock. The mucus from this area might also provide some benefit to the developing eggs. Nonetheless, fathead minnows are sometimes sold to fishermen as a bait fish, which has contributed to their accidental introduction into many different areas all across the U.S. These tough little fish grow to a length of about 2 or 3 inches, and a domesticated version can also be found in the aquarium trade and sold as a feeder fish under the name rosy red minnow. And what makes these minnows so different from most other minnows is that the male sets up and defends a territory underneath a submerged object such as a log or a rock. The female minnow then lays her eggs on the underside of the rock, and then the male remains with the eggs and tends to them until they hatch. And this is in sharp contrast to most other species of minnows who just scatter their eggs in the substrate and then offer no parental care. But the real star of this video is a male tessellated darter who is also tending to its eggs on the underside of this rock. And apparently, he's decided that the rock now belongs to him. So he's evicted the fathead minnow and is now refusing to let him get back under the rock so that he can tend to his eggs. But that won't stop this feisty little minnow from trying. But this tessellated darter has another competitor who also wants to lay claim to this valuable piece of underwater real estate. It's another male tessellated darter who has come to challenge the current occupant of this rock to see if he can take over this nesting site. And it's relatively common for one male tessellated darter to take over a choice nesting spot from another smaller tessellated darter. And when he does displace his rival, the larger male will even continue to care for the smaller male's eggs. And this form of parenting is referred to as alloparental care. And it's more likely to occur in habitats where there's a scarcity of nesting sites. Both the fathead minnow and the tessellated darter are known to use this form of parenting. The females of both species also prefer to lay their eggs under a rock that already has eggs on it, and they'd rather use a site that has the greatest amount of available space on which to place their eggs. So male tessellated darters often move between nest sites, with larger males displacing smaller males and then abandoning the site when most of the available surfaces are covered with eggs. 
This breeding system allows the larger male darters to maximize the number of eggs that they're able to fertilize by taking over the best breeding sites and then abandoning those sites when there's very little room left for more eggs. The abandoned nests are then occupied by smaller males who will continue to care for the other males' eggs. And here comes that fathead minnow once again trying to get under this rock to care for his eggs. But this particular rock is in high demand, so there's very little chance of success. Now, the fathead minnow does eventually give up this nesting site and his eggs, but there's a good possibility that this tessellated darter will unknowingly be caring for the eggs of the fathead minnow as well as the eggs of several female tessellated darters. By the way, the female darters are not as boldly colored as the males, so it's important to note that the male darters that you see in this video are in full spawning mode, so they're much darker and have more vivid patterns right now than they do at other times of the year. And when they're not spawning, the males are much harder to distinguish from the females. And speaking of the female darters, here comes one now, and it looks as if she may be ripe with eggs. Apparently, she didn't like what she saw, so she's decided to move along and look for a different place to lay her eggs. Now this male has left his nesting site to have a look around and possibly find something to eat, but he doesn't leave the eggs unattended for very long, because there's always another male darter looking to take over this perfect little rock at the bottom of the river. And here comes another male darter right now to see if he can lay claim to this beautiful spot. But the intruder is promptly chased away by the current owner, and upon his return, he enters his little cave and then flips upside down so that he can continue tending to the eggs underneath this rock. And for those of you who have aquariums and are considering keeping darters for the first time, the tessellated darter would be a great species to start with. And while they're not the most beautiful species of darter that occurs in North America, they are one of the most tolerant of them all. They're also one of the most common darters in the country, but there are many more to choose from. In fact, there are more species of darters in North America than any other group of freshwater fish, with the exception of the minnows. And many of these darters are among the most colorful freshwater fish in America. In fact, the colors on some of these breeding males rival that of any tropical reef fish in the world. And if you haven't seen these beauties, then some great examples to look for are the rainbow darter, the tangerine darter, and the blue mask darter, all of which are incredibly beautiful fish. Unfortunately, where I live in the northeastern part of the U.S., this is the only darter species that I can film in the wild. But there are a few online sources that sell some of the more colorful varieties. Just keep in mind that darters need live food such as black worms and white worms, or frozen food such as frozen blood worms, frozen adult brine shrimp, or frozen mysis shrimp. And darters will rarely ever take flake food. They also need water that is relatively cool and kept moving so that it contains lots of dissolved oxygen. So if you have more than one fish tank, it's best to keep your darters in tanks that are as close to the floor as possible. And you probably won't need a heater. Many species, such as the gorgeous rainbow darter, can also be bred in captivity, so captive-bred rainbow darters can sometimes be purchased online. 
However, many populations of wild darters are in serious trouble due to pollution and the construction of dams, as well as several other serious alterations to their habitats or the flow of water. The erosion of upland areas around their streams caused by road building and clear cutting of forests is also a major problem because the loose soil runs into the river every time it rains and covers valuable breeding habitat with mud and silt. And to complicate matters even further, many darter species are confined to a single river system where even the smallest problem can lead to a disastrous decline in their numbers. But our friend the tessellated darter is doing just fine because they're much more tolerant of pollution and excessive erosion than most other darter species because they nest under a rock and they tend to their eggs, keeping them free of silt and mud by fanning the eggs and protecting them from predators. And in many urban areas, the tessellated darter is the only darter species still present. Nonetheless, it's a constant battle for survival, and these male tessellated darters are always tirelessly at work either tending to the eggs, looking for food, or chasing away the competition from their nest here on the bottom of the river. And it's this struggle for survival that favors the strong and eliminates the weak, so that in the long run, the entire population of tessellated darters benefits by ensuring that only the strongest and the healthiest males are able to reproduce and contribute to the gene pool. All right, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully, it's given you a greater awareness and appreciation for these amazing fish. And I know you were able to see some things that you've never seen before and even learned a few things along the way. And as always, I really hope that you have a beautiful day.